Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is show you how to graph this trigonometric equation. And to do that, what we want to use is the reciprocal function. So the reciprocal function of secant is going to be cosine. So I can write as y equals the cosine of x divided by 2 plus 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph cosine real quick, and then we'll get into secant. So to graph cosine, we need to go through our main important pieces of information. We need to know, understand what the amplitude is. We need to know what the period. We need to know the x scale. There's an L in there. We need to know the phase shift. And we need to know the vertical transformation. I don't know why I have a slant there. Phase shift and vertical transformation. So remember, the amplitude is just the absolute value of A, which in this case, our A is just going to be absolute value of 1, which is equal to 1. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by B. Oh, you probably are like, where's A and B and C all come from? Well, that comes from the standard form. It doesn't matter if it's secant, cosine, sine, tangent, um, whatever. It's A cosine of BX minus C plus D. Okay? So A was the coefficient of cosine, which here is 1. B is the coefficient of X, which we don't have a cosine coefficient. But you can see we have 1, and that 1 is being divided by 2. Okay, So to solve this, I need to multiply by the reciprocal. And what I see is I get 4 pi. Then to find my x scale, I take my period divided by 4. Well, my period is 4 pi divided by 4, which equals pi. Phase shift, all you do is take whatever's inside the center and set it equal to 0. So I say x divided by 2 equals 0. Multiply by 2 on both sides x equals 0. And vertical tra transformation is just your d, which in this case, d is equal to 1. OK, so to graph the cosine, before we get into secant, we got to at least know what the parent graph looks like. OK? So I'm going to start with my initial period. And the initial period is just kind of, you know, what the initial period is just graphing y equals cosine of x. And you have to know this initial period to kind of make sense of how the graph is going to look with all these different transformations. So the initial period goes up to 1, down to 1, and has a period of 2 pi. The x scale for this is pi halves. Okay, And the initial period starts at 1, intersect, minimum, intersect, maximum. So it looks something like this. Again, this is y cosine of x. That's what I'm graphing there. Okay, Now let's go and take a look at what has changed. Now remember, the amplitude is how high and below my graph goes. So my amplitude is still 1. So therefore, on my new graph, I'm still going to go up 1, down to 1. However, my period, instead of going up to 2 pi, my period is now 4 pi. Now one thing I'm also going to do, because we like to graph two periods, is actually, I'll do it in a negative direction. That's fine. So I'm going to go over to 4 pi. The x scale is pi. That means the distance between x scale is pi, where in the, in the initial, um, in my paragraph, it's pi halves. So I'm going to go pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. OK? So the last thing is, now um, I don't have a phase shift, so therefore my graph is still going to start at 0. However, now I have a vertical transformation up 1. So the whole graph, this whole graph is going to be shifted up 1. So therefore, I'm going to go up 1 unit. So that's going to be my maximum. Where previously it would be an intersection is now going to be there to my minimum, to an intersection, to a maximum. And a lot of times what I like to do is just draw a dotted line just to kind of remind me that that x-axis has shifted upwards, right? The x-axis shifted upwards. So I like to just draw the dotted line in there. It's not a part of the graph. But I draw the dotted line there just so I know, oh, OK, that, you know, that's still there. Um, or that's where the old intercept would be. Now, we've already graphed one period. Let's graph two periods. So I can graph a period in the negative direction. And all I'm going to do is just follow that exact same pattern. Okay. Now, the important thing, though, is we're not graphing. That's cosine of x divided by 2. We don't want to graph that. We want to graph sine of x divided by 2. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to dot this graph, because we are only concerned about 
um, the secant graph. Now, if I was going to transform this back down, if you remember where the graph intersects the x-axis produces an asymptote for the reciprocal function. So therefore, if I was to shift this down, you can see at this value, I would have an intercept. So guess what? That is where my asymptote is going to occur for the secant graph. Because for the secant graph and the cosecant graph, we need to make sure we take our, parent, our reciprocal function and create asymptotes. Then at the maximum and the minimum, we need to have our graphs approach our asymptotes in the opposite direction. And obviously, if you want to check this, you can create a, use a table of values to go and see. But regardless of the black graph, you can now see in the red is what our graph for secant of x divided by 2 plus 1 will look like. Thanks.